Hey guys, welcome back. This is Carter with Bitsby Trippin'. We're here with Bitcoin legend Luke from Ocean. And I'm going to open up to let you guys know like what we're doing and what is going on with the pool. I know this is a newer thing. You, uh, this is also with Jack Dorsey, right? Is this is he part of uh, this endeavor? Jack was one of our investors. Yeah. One of the investors. Awesome. Yeah. So. A lot of the folks that are follow our channel usually look at like what the tech stack is, how to get miners configured, how to get set up on you know infrastructure, that sort of thing. Um, you know, we, we come from you know 2013 in the space in this channel and just educating people on like what's out there, why to you know choose maybe pool and then what is the differences uh, you know by comparison to other and stuff. So uh, I'm gonna get right into this. Let folks know who you are in the space and then like what is ocean and why should we look at this yeah i'm luke dasker i'm the longest active bitcoin core developer at this point i originally started the pool back in 2011 mm -hmm. ran it for a few years and eventually spun it down to focus on other things it was just a hobby at the time um last year i launched the pool as ocean the new name and this is mainly to address the growing centralization problem around Bitcoin mining that afflicts the network of today. Yeah, and then seeing like Foundry and some of the marathon and the groups here that are the public trading companies and them having their own pool. And I know we've had a few cycles of where certain pools have got big. There was some, you know, older pools. I remember back in 2014 when one of the pools were getting, I can't think of the name off the top of my head now, but that was, it was reaching close to 50 percent the whole industry came back and was like hey this is not good for the health of the network you know and that was in a lot more distributed uh kind of standpoint in bitcoin there was a lot of centralization happening in china at the time but from like various miners but looking at you know i think it was idris it was deep it, bit g hash io there it is they, yeah deep, yeah hash probably a few others yeah it was uh eggless or eggless i'm i'm, mis I'm misspelling that this name it's like e l g e eggless I think it was there was a there was a few different. Uh, I mean, I remember my first poll was slush when it first came out, and one of the the posts I have on Twitter that was pinned for a long time. It's like, you know, you're an OG. When 2011, I got a notice saying, hey, or 2012, I got a notice saying, hey, you haven't logged into this poll in a year. We're gonna delete your account. <laughs> so it was like, you know, very familiar with pool. And for folks that are not fully tracking the way Bitcoin mining and works, like. You could be an individual miner and independent, but if you're pushing your hash rate to a, a larger pool, that's part of the systemic risk of not having enough decentralization in the space, right? You have a, a so long formulation of this hash rate going to a pool, and then that pool can then construct those blocks, and there's a, they have a lot of influence on the network. So this is part of what I believe Ocean is offering also is to, to help decentralize some of that hash rate, right? Right. The, the reason this whole problem exists is that when you're using a mining pool, the mining pool is the real miner, so to speak. They're the ones making the actual blocks and providing the hash power to find the block based on what template they decide. Correct. And this is where you get into, uh, you know, if there's behaviors happening on the network, such as like something like ordinals or somebody doing something that could be seen as like an attack on the network. And if that pool is propagating this, then, you know, it's just one being fair education on like, what's the real systemic risk of like a pool's act? Or, you know, I know there's a lot of question, like, you know, the, the pool methods, right? Like if you look at some of the, the just out of the box, you know, configurations and the way they're configuring with like post having how many blocks per day, they're winning and how are you pay like, What's the audit on that, right? Are you getting paid there, that type of thing? Um, so like from a, is there specific uh, changes or, uh, or alterations with the way your guys' pool is versus any other? Is it just point hash rate to it? I mean, is there any kind of other config differences or is it still kind of just URL, worker ID, like how? The, the way we've got it set up at the moment, mm -hmm. it's, three major differences versus other pools. Mm -hmm. First is that we're non-custodial. All the other pools, you mine with them, they get the coins from Bitcoin, the Bitcoin network. Mm -hmm. They keep the coins and they just put it in your account yep. based on what they decide that you, they, that you burned. 
and then you can withdraw from the pool. And so they're they're kind of operating both a mining pool and a custodial. Just mm -hmm. whereas we only do the mine, we don't ever custody anyone's coins. So when the block is found, the miners that have contributed toward that block get their fair share in the block itself. Another major difference is that we're transparent, so you can actually verify that the algorithm produces what you're actually receiving. You can verify that you're being paid the same fair share. We're not scraping off the top of it, like apparently many others do. So yeah, so it's very it's so that's interesting from a transparency standpoint. And I'm gonna peel this back mechanically because we have quite a few engineers and developers and stuff that watch this podcast. So from like a construction and so like the traditional normal pool, I'll pick any. It will go into essentially their hot wallet, right? Like they're they're they, what are the cold we, wallet? Are they're, they're cold wallet, right? <laughs> yeah. And then at some point they'll do a distribution based on some share count it's like a numerator denominator thing like there's your percentage in and you're on you know there could be uh and i know this was happening a lot during like the ethereum mining thing not that's the same but there was a risk on like the dark forest kind of stuff where like were they doing other things when they went to construct a block to add in other features or adding other things into the block it wasn't just bitcoin mining right they were adding other content into it, uh, be it ordinals or whatever else. And was there uh, an incentive deal set up because of the way it's structured that they could make a deal with somebody else and then those transactions would be prioritized versus just taking like an order fee list, right? Of like they have, since they're a, a mining pool that can kind of control the way that template is, that then they would, you know, be able to do other things on that block where it, what you're saying, Ocean, of the differentiator is like you guys are algorithmically during that, that block template, you are saying these are the contributors, and then you're sourcing that out the Bitcoin that's there, fees plus the reward, all open at that moment in time. So it's not like behind the scenes, it's in the front where right. you can see that transparency, right? Yeah. So and as far as picking what the transactions go in the block, it's intended to be where the miner is doing that decision. And right now the mining pools are doing that. Even with Ocean today, we have a role there simply at necessity, but we for miners four different template options to choose from four different seeds about how they want their blocks constructed. And our goal, which we're getting closer and closer to, yeah. is to have the miners actually creating the entire block themselves with their own node, and that way we're hands off on that respect. It's gonna be interesting. Well, I'll have that back when you guys hear mechanically. And I usually like to try to turn this into like an analogy. So like in the in the concept of that block construction would be like a train car and people waiting to get onto that train car ticket. If in this concept there's like there's already an organiz in an organized way that ahead of it of people getting onto that train know how to get onto it. Like you you are being transparent of knowing who's getting the train and then it, it's everybody's aware of that in the current block uh, construction from a normal other pool, like it's making the decision who's getting on the train. Like, irregardless if somebody was paying a certain fee, they could say, hey, no, you know what? Like this person has priority. So they can actually make the choice of what block is going versus that person showing up with a ticket being able to get onto that train. Yeah, like it's all. Uh, my my schools are making all the decisions. Decisions. Yeah, mining pools are making all the decisions. All the you get on that train with the, that block is the train car, and then that was the next because there. Mining pool have about or more than 50%. They can easily keep, you know, they could just say someone's not allowed to transact at all. Right, correct. Yeah, and I know there was uh, for a little bit there, but as we get in through this regulatory, you know, as the world is figuring out how to regulate or be part of it, and there's a lot of resistance. We try to provide a handful of education things, so like industry and government affairs of like, you know, at the end of the day, if you put a lot of regulation, it's just going to move, you know, to an area where it's not fully deregulated, but where it is, you know, like I always tell people like when we're building out farms, like we'll we have like governor's office or whoever down there, and like these are containers and we built this whole setup in three weeks. Like you could literally lift and share that. There's a uh, a poison pill to put a heavy a lot of resistance over regulation. When I'm talking like 
if and when regulation ever pushes down to push on rules for being constrained, right? There's still this kind of gray market right now in the space of like, are they money services business? Is it not, you know, if they're holding the coin and then distributing it to you, you know, there's none of that framework there right now, which works fine. And it should, in my opinion, there shouldn't be any framework that Bitcoin is built to do what it does. Um, it doesn't need to have somebody regulating the way blocks are, as an example. Um, and I think this is good for explaining that you can't have a way to this. Taking it in into custodial and then paying people out. This is done at the construction at the mental piece of the block, right? Right. So. And, well, even without necessarily the government breathing down their necks, yep. the bigger pools, especially, have all gotten to the point where they have to yes, they voluntarily KYC all of us, and you have to provide identity documents and stuff just to even start with using these all of us. Whereas with Ocean, we don't know who any of our miners are. They just put an address in the miner and start mining. Yeah. No accounts or anything. Yeah. So it keeps it to the true nature of the way, you know, Bitcoin and, you know, the original architecture was designed to like keep it pseudonymous of participation. Anybody could enter the network, anybody leave the network. It was a choice at moment in time from that individual to be participant, right? So, I mean, it's, it's still, I do like that. I like that concept of, um staying to that structure right to where it does lean it out because it what it's proven is that you don't need all this structural anytime you start adding a lot of features to something you know you always as development and developer you can always have something that can go wrong with that um and you're just adding more complexity to the system so yeah that is appreciated it's interesting I and mean, i can't wait to understand on how you know your you know your roadmap will make it to where the miners can construct the blocks. I'm, I know enough name on a block template construction and how the mechanics work with it. It seems like it's a, a that's a pretty complex problem to try to solve to where you could have the miners choose. And since there's a collaboration of miners there, is that like our decision tree of like how that block would be constructed? No, each miner would make their own. Um, instead of trying to turn the centralized structure into a decentralized infrastructure, yeah, we're approaching it more of taking the solo mining infrastructure, how you would solo mine, making that really easy, and having it so that the solo miners can work together as dependent solo miners. Otherwise, interesting. So yeah, uh, I have to peel that. I'm still trying to figure out how how they would make one block. Like so, if, let's say one of the miners in that stack. You know, got the nuts, won it, essentially, and you know, is broadcasting that. Okay, I have, I have the key, I have the ability to create this. All those other participants now inherit, I guess that that right to participate in, in including, you know, because they had effort, right? To help the miner who it. found that block yep. determined how that block was made. Yep. With the exception of who. Who gets the big rewards in that block? Which is, okay, that that's what the pool is coordinating between all the miners. Got it, got it. Okay, so yeah, I was trying to figure out how do they? Is it like it has because it, there's a lot of different entities contributing hash rate to a pool, and then if one one actually ASIC is gonna find it right of you know the 126 on like a say an S19 Pay Pro, and then that's gonna give them rights. So then they will give that block template, and then the other on the payout side, it will then right. It shares the payouts, but as far as the block template goes, it's essentially as if they were mining on. The got it. Got it. Okay. okay, that makes more sense. I was like trying to figure out engineering wise, like this is like the developer had on me. I'm like, how it would have to get to a decision in some way to to figure out a consensus, another internal consensus to figure out like. What template are we using today? You know, but it's it's doing it based on a solo miner kind of, Got it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so was, every miner could be working from a completely different block, as long as they're sharing the rubrics. Got it. Got it. Perfect. Yeah. So no, that that does make sense. So now, I would say the next kind of step in that, how does that? So it'd be from the four templates. Now, would that prevent anybody from trying to do something like an ordinals or anything on uh, Ocean if they wanted to include? 
that in their block? Well, the four templates that we have now is yep. kind of a stopgap before we have this fully decentralized model working. Yep. Once we have the fully decentralized model, there won't be the four templates anymore. It'll be you design your own template, you configure your node however you want. Okay. You know, if someone wants to do something and like make a huge yeah. JPEG block, yeah, there's yeah. nothing we can do with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you they know, can still do that. They can do it. It would. I would say it's still a bad thing for them to do, but yeah, they yeah. can, and we wouldn't even know it unless they found the block. Got it. Yeah, it, it's it's a really uh, you know, needle haystack kind of uh, probability, and if every end is is projecting uh, uh, the ability to create their own block, you would really be finding that one miner that wants to do that, right? Versus okay. one that's just kind of you know, you know filling the block. It's still bad for Bitcoin if a miner were to make a giant JPEG block, but mm -hmm. it's more important that mining be decentralized, decentralized. and it, it centralizing doesn't solve that problem in an appropriate fashion. Right. Well, it's I, I would almost say it's incentivized <laughs> right now to include it, right? Because they're no, they're they're not the giant JPEG blocks. Oh, yeah. kind of oh, yeah. incentivized because you don't have any fees, but oh yeah. Well, I mean, unless they're trying to put a ton of it's all I've I've always liked the game theory. Under trying to undo theory of just all the different attack vector that being, you know, what is people in that decentralized open environment within a template, like what is the realm of possible try to do? But yeah, it's uh, it's actually interesting so that uh, because all our competitors are FPPS pools basically, yeah. and they've got fees or scraping behind the scenes, mm -hmm. it's actually more profitable with our spin. Exactly. Like even our most spam filter template is much better than a competing pool with solid Because it's it's you're not getting that that take or you're getting your fair share. Yeah, you're getting Actually, your fair share. You're getting what you deserve. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, no, this is this is good. I, I I'm really glad that we had the time to kind of kind of peel that back because I really did actually have things with you. It's like how it mechanically work. I've seen some of the stuff on Twitter. I know other folks have seen it on Twitter, but I wanted to kind of peel back like how mechanics of it uh, for people to understand the differences on it. So if we'll kind of wrap this one up with like where do people go to find more information out? And let's say they're an individual participant and they want to you know, learn how to yeah. block that kind of stuff. Do you guys have that information on? Well, right now we don't support the you're, decentralized mining that's yep. still a work in progress yep. um but all the information about the pool as it is today is on ocean.yz okay so it's a new dot xyz domain name so xyz the actual website um and so it's fairly simple to get set up with like i said if when i have to read all about it you can just put your bitcoin addresses the username in your miner um the host name mine.ocean.xyz yeah and you could be mining Right away? Seconds. A seconds, awesome. Uh, you can also go to the website and see your stats, and after even after doing that, you can see your stats and you can configure it to pay you over lightning if you want. There you go. Yeah, that's that's a good one, just to save you, I mean, it's kind of ironic, save you a little bit on fees on the mining network, but it's, uh, yeah, no, that's good. For the small miners, yeah. they only earn maybe a few stats every block sometimes. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, and that, the, the big thing is getting more people, and we, we try to share... Like, you know, don't go YOLO all in. Like, understand how it works first. I always tell people, crawl, walk, run, right? Like, get in a small miner, set it up, understand the mechanics of the network, and then work your way in. Like, yeah. It's a good way to put this network. Because we're directly interfacing with Bitcoin, there's no, uh, there's a lot of variance compared to the pools where it's all, you know, going to share your page for that share. Yeah. You got to wait till the pool finds blocks, and we're still in a pool, so we're still kind of small. So yeah, you only find yeah. blocks maybe two times a week or so. Yeah, so more hash rate. Any more hash rate. Yeah. Right. Once we get more hash rate, it might probably pay every day. There it is. If you guys are out there exploring smaller miner and you're trying to like understand how this network works, take a look at it. Go out there, you heard where get them. We're gonna wrap this one up. I want to thank you a lot for coming over and explaining this. Um, it's good. It's been a minute, man. I, I know I met Luke back in like 2012, I believe, 2013. It was one of the other conferences back in the day, but uh, you know, it's been a long time. It's been a decade. I mean, and we're 
Nolan's face. All right, we'll catch you guys in the next one.